It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Tazria Mitzorah, who's in, who's out. I want to thank our sponsors, Andy and Tricia Woodman. If we look at this parsha of Tazria Mitzorah, it speaks about various people who have impurity. A woman who gives birth, some degree, the baby who's born, he's an Arel, before he he's, has a bris milah, he's an Arel, he's, perhaps he's uh, it's a status of also being outside the camp as an uncircumcised. We have the leper, takes up most of Tazriya Mitzorah, and also those who have impurity from their bodies, men, women who have various types of impurity, including the Nida, those who need to go to the mikvah. The question is, what is the point of all these laws of impurity? We should add to it also, last week's Parsha, Parsha Shemini spoke about kosher and non-kosher animals, which are also described as animals that are tamay or tahor. If they're not killed properly, if they're kosher animals and they're killed and they just die, then they also have impurity. Non-kosher animals are dead. when They're, they're always impure when they're dead. Uh, so there's an impurity there as well. So the question is, what is the point of all this impurity? And what in what way is it introduced in this book? So if you look at the end of Parshat Mitzorah, the end of both of these, this double Parsha, warn the Jews about their impurity. And that we don't want them to die from their impurity when they defile the sanctuary with their impurity. We know the story of Natav and Aviyu. They died in the sanctuary. Their bodies had to be removed. We don't want to have the dead in the sanctuary as... Rabbi Yitz Greenberg points out the, uh, the sanctuary is a place of life. There's nothing, no place for death in the Beis HaMikdash. So uh, all these things, uh, the rotting body, the, uh, the, the, uh, the renewal of a, of a woman's body each, each month, uh, there's a certain element of death there, and these things create impurity. Good. So to a degree, all these laws of impurity to keep us pure so we can go into the holy place. My son Asher recently said in a lecture about, about impurity. He said the impurity is really not a value in itself. There's no mitzvah to be pure, but rather it's a stepping stone toward Kedusha. Uh, th- that theme we see later on in the book after we discuss the laws of purity. What do we have? We have uh, going into the holy place in next week's Parsha Achrimot. We have the, uh, the Parsha of Kedoshim to you, how to be holy based on the laws of the Torah. So they're really, these are stepping stones toward holiness. So we're in the book of Ayikra. In the book of Ayikra we want to bring sacrifices. We ask very much about the sanctuary the Beit HaMikdash. And if you have these impurities, you can't be in the Beit HaMikdash. In the book of Amidbar, we have these, these same impure people, particularly the leper, who are presented in a different context. There it's presented people to send out of the camp. Not so much as to who belongs in the sanctuary and personal aspiration for holiness, but it's a communal thing. The commu- Communally, we've got to send certain people out. They don't belong. We have to send them out. Who are they? Called Sarua v'cholzav, chol tamei l'nefesh. Those who are leprous, those who are uh, have uh, bodily emissions, and anyone who is impure of the soul, perhaps uh, the impurity of the body, there, the, concept, the notion is, in Parshat Naso, there the notion is that we need to send them because if we don't send them, then the, the camp will be impure. We don't want to have an impure camp. We want to have purity. So we need to send these folks out because they defile the camp. So here, by Yikra, we're talking about personal stepping stone of purity leading to Kedusha, to holiness. We're talking about trying to bring a sacrifice and going into the base of Mikdash, the Holy Temple, Sanctuary, Tabernacle, and we need to have purity in order to do that. We don't want to defile the holiest places, so we have to be pure. We have to know what, when we're leprous or have bodily missions, etc. But in Bamiba, we're trying to set up not just a sanctuary, but also a camp. And the whole camp has to have a certain nature. We have to send the impure out. Now, the rabbis tell us that this impurity sometimes due to behavior that the leper is, is a leprous person because he's haughty, because he or she speaks lush and hara, gossip, uh, and other, sarudai, and they're stingy, all various sins the rabbis attribute 
to those who are lepers. Uh, and later on, also in Parsha, the end of Achimot and Kedoshim, we also find that impurity can be a matter of sinfulness, that if you uh, commit certain uh, sexual acts, that also uh, is considered defiling or making the land impure. Uh, so we don't want to make the land impure. Um, so it turns out that when we expunge these people from the camp, we're helping to make the camp a more, more pure place. So I wanted to talk about who's in and who's out. I'm going to talk about the fact that when we have rules that restrict people from entry, what is the purpose of those rules? So some people think that life is a club. Life is a club, and the question is, who's in and who's out? And the more rules we can create, the more it's cozy in here because we're in the club, and the more we kind of get a little, a little high out of the fact that we can kick other people out of that club. Someone recently asked me, what does it mean to be involved in certain organizations? I said, let me think about it. What do we do in your organization? We threw out this guy. We said that those people can't join in. Somehow, clubs, institutions are often all about who can get in, who can get out, even as a rabbi. Sometimes uh, my role is to, can you write the letter for this person? Can you not? Can you marry them? Can you not marry them? And it becomes sort of like a club. Now, so Jewish sociologist who pointed out, Heilman pointed out that it's good to have rules. Institutions that have standards, it creates something you want to get in. I was talking to someone who's a promoter and he said, you know, if you have a club that nobody's allowed to get into, everybody wants to get in. So there, there is something to creating an ambiance within your institution, whether it's a school, shul, an organization, a Jewish organization, any kind of organization, club, uh, there's something to creating and ambiance, so having rules, standards, so that, uh, so that, uh, so that not to keep other people out, but to create something that everybody wants to get in, and that it's worth being in, and there's something meaningful about being in. You know, there's a, a lot of people know that there's a Jewish custom that if someone uh, intermarries, we, we sit shiva, we we mourn their, the loss of that child. And if you look at one of the original sources for that in the Sefer Hasidim, it says that so that the child will feel so bad, he'll come back. Often we present these things as if, if someone does something egregious in our community, you know what we do? We throw them out, we pretend they're dead. But you have to look, read the fine print. No. If someone does something egregious in the community, we try to incentivize them or discourage them to come back in. We try to discourage them from, from being out. We try to hold the, uh, help them to come back in. Sometimes we even do that by simply creating these rules and saying, oh no, you can't be part of this club if you're not in. You can't come in the base of Mikdash if you're not in. You can't be part of the camp if you're not in the camp of Israel, the, the 12 tribes. But we're not, we're, we are not throwing the leper out so we can permanently be out. We're hoping that uh, everyone will be mevakesh, rachmi malav. As Rashi says, everyone will feel bad for him and they'll say, oh, he, he's impure, he's outside the camp. We pray for him to come back in. We don't have standards so we can kick people out. We have standards so that we can enhance our community and make our community worth being in. If a community had no standards, then what would be the point of it? If there's a club to let me in, then what's the point of it? We need a club that says, hey, Finkelstein, you gotta shape up, you gotta, you gotta step up, you gotta, you gotta try to climb that ladder, purity, holiness, then you can come in. And then I say, hey, I wanna be part of this club. So, as we think about you know, who's in and who's out in our community, our congregation, our synagogues, our institutions, let's remember that the goal is not to be exclusive. The goal is to create incentives. The goal is to welcome in. The goal is to, uh, is to remind people the importance of being in and what we have to offer as a community. But if, if it's seen that our community has any sense of, of a meanness, a mean spirit, then who would want to be in anyway? And what's the point of being in? So let's remember this as we, even as we ponder this leper whom we th cast outside the community. But the goal is beyond Torah. The, the goal is to bring them back in the community. And indeed, we read in the Haftorah that even lepers can be valuable. They can bring great salvation to the Jewish people and tell everyone that you know what's going on out there. With it, you kicked us out, but out there, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of food. So maybe somebody wants to come and get some. And that's how the famine was solved. It was the lepers that did it. There's something to them as well. Even the rabbis say that Gehazi, 
uh, the, the, he was just kicked out by Alicia. And he said, you know, don't kick him out with two hands, only one hand. With one hand you kick out, the other hand you embrace him and you bring him back in. The point of kicking someone out is not to just make them forever lepers, forever. That's what Elisha did to Naaman. And perhaps the rabbis are saying that's not really the idea. If you have a student and he's going off in the wrong path, you want him to be a leper, send him outside the community, but then bring him back in. Don't keep him out there forever. And for all generations, he's going to be a leper. That's not, that's not our way. So even as we consider this Parsha is about really someone who has to go outside the community, let's remember that our goal, even as we have standards, is to bring everyone ultimately into these standards, to, to climb the ladder, holiness, purity, holiness, and ultimately being able to visit with God. Thank you for joining us here at the Baron Hirsch Congregation. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein.